Welcome to Celebrity Entertainment and News with Southern Bell 74. I first want to apologize. Um, I had scheduled a live stream at 11 tonight and I ran into some technical difficulties. I'm still learning how StreamYard works, so I wanted to apologize. Um, I know several people stopped by to show support and I want to give a special shout out to China Doll. Thank you so much for taking the time to come see me. I really appreciate it. I'm going to do my intro and then we're going to get right into the agenda. Okay, now that we have the disclaimer out of the way, let's go over the agenda. We're going to talk about up and coming rapper Chucky Trill and how he got shot. We're going to discuss Janet Jackson. We're going to talk about Bun B. We're going to discuss Kelvin Hunter and Sabrina. And then we're going to close out on a story that I found very, very interesting. And it's concerning hazing that's been going on in a lot of the colleges and universities over the United States. First, let's get into rapper Chucky Trill. He is in town um, for the NBA All-Star Weekend, but he apparently got killed on Interstate I-85. Let me read a little bit about the stories about. Houston's Chucky Trill, best known for his rap single, Keisha, was shot in the head while driving on I-85 near Jimmy Carter Boulevard around 3 a.m. last night. Police responded to a report of shots fired and found the gunshot victim in a stopped car along Interstate I-85. His real government name is Corey Beechich, and he was 33 years of age. He was transported to an area hospital where he was pronounced dead. Passengers in Trill's vehicle were not injured, but they could not describe who shot him or what kind of vehicle that the person was driving. The aspiring rapper was scheduled to perform at one of the many NBA All-Star events this weekend in Atlanta. Thousands of people have descended upon Atlanta to take part in the NBA All-Star Weekend festivities. The NBA All-Star Game at State Form Arena is closed to the public due to COVID, but that hasn't deterred visitors who have ignored Mayor Keisha Lance Bottoms' pleas for them to please stay home. The pandemic has been going on for a year now, so people are tired of staying in the house. Um, a NBA fan told one of the news reporters, that he's visiting from New Jersey and is excited to attend this weekend parties. It's all on the internet, he says. Celebrities are all from all over, everywhere are down here. Okay, I'm going to do a quick news clip about the story. New updated on breaking news right now. The search is on for the shooter who killed a man on I-85 
south in Gwinnett County. And Mark Aram and Triple Team Traffic told you about this since we came on the air this morning at 4.30. And Channel 2's Kristen Holloway is live at the Gwinnett County Police Department's West Precinct. Kristen, you just spoke to investigators a while ago. What have you learned since that time? Well, we know that the man who was shot, police told us he died once he arrived to the hospital. Now, it's unclear if he was actually the driver of the car or if he was a passenger. But this particular shooting, we know it happened on the interstate just north of Jimmy Carter Boulevard around 3 this morning. Now, they shut down several lanes here to process this scene. To make matters worse, several people were inside of that car when the victim was shot. However, they were not hurt. Police say there is no suspect information at this time. Now, we've reported on multiple interstate shootings this year, and it's only March. Police told me how dangerous these shootings can be. Obviously, these types of shootings are very concerning for the police department. Not only do you have the two vehicles involved in this shooting, but you also have multiple people that are driving on the interstate that could also be victims in these types of crimes. Right now, detectives are speaking with the people inside of that car. They couldn't give me a specific number of how many people were inside. We are working to find that out and find out what led up to this shooting. Of course, we're going to bring you the very latest on this investigation today at noon. And four shootings in just over a month's time, Kristen, way too many. Thank you very much. All right, guys, um, I first want to apologize. I'm so sorry. Um, I attempted to do a broadcast at 1130 um, and I ran into some technical difficulties. And I just wanted to apologize for anyone who attended it. I had to cut the video short because I'm still learning StreamYard. Um, I want to do some quick shout outs. Um, Tracy, thank you so much for coming by. You're such a sweetheart. You've been so supportive of me and I genuinely appreciate and love you. Um, pieces for life. And I also want to get a special shout out to China Doll, who also stopped by to just show me some love and support. You guys are amazing and I really do appreciate it. Okay, we're going to move on to our second story of the night and it's concerning Janet Jackson. As you guys know, there's going to be an up and coming documentary. That's right. And it's going to premiere on Lifetime and A&E. A major documentary is planned to coincide with the 40th anniversary of Janet Jackson's debut album. She is the latest superstar to get this kind of documentary treatment. As you recently know, guys, um, Salt and Pepper also had a documentary done on them on Lifetime. Uh, Wendy Williams, too. She was the most recent one. This will chronicle her musical success as well as her tumultuous private life. The reclusive superstar will discuss her controversial 2004 Super Bowl bowl appearance with Justin Timberlake, where she flashed her breasts, and she will also discuss the death of her icon brother, Michael Jackson. Deadline sources claim that the British production company Worker B have been filming Janet over the last three years and have been granted exclusive access to this footage and this will appear in the documentary. Um, they have not put out dates yet, but it will be upcoming. As soon as I find out those dates, guys, I'll drop it in a, a hot topic of the day so you guys will be the first to know. All right, let's see what's trending now. A music legend is getting the star treatment twice over. Janet Jackson is so big, a new film about her life will be a two-night event. <laughs> the documentary, with the working title Janet, will air simultaneously on A&E and Lifetime. Two hours one night and two hours the next. Jackson will reportedly address her controversial Super Bowl halftime show with Justin Timberlake and the death of her brother Michael Jackson. Janet is slated to air early next year. Okay, guys. Now we're going to move on to our next story, and it's concerning rapper Bun B. As you guys know, recently Texas suffered a severe winter storm where they experienced horrible power outages, and a lot of people are still recovering. Well, legendary rapper Bun B called out Texas Governor Greg Abbott about reopening the entire state and lifting mask mandates. Not only Texas, but Mississippi as well are going to be lifting their mass mandates. Well, this has sparked outrage. And on Tuesday, when he announced that he was ending the COVID-19 restrictions that would be Governor Abbott, he said all businesses in the state will reopen fully by March the 10th. Well, 
that caused some outrage and fear. Because as we know, COVID-19 is still having outrageous numbers, guys. These rates, I think they kind of calmed down, but they've always still been increased. So I think when the vaccine came out, people became lax and they were like, okay, well, we got this vaccine now. We can come back out. That is not the case. Bunby took his frustration to Instagram where he berated a Texas governor. You have to read some of these clips. I'm not going to repeat what some of the language was because I'm afraid that the Google moderators are coming here and start deleting stuff. But um, I will leave a link in my description bar where you can go and look at exactly what Bun B said. We're going to do a quick video clip and hear exactly what the governor said. Breaking news in Texas, where Republican Governor Greg Abbott just issued an executive order ending, ending the statewide mask mandate and will now allow all businesses to reopen at 100 percent capacity on March 10th. That is one week from tomorrow. Texas is now the largest state in the nation to no longer have a mask mandate. Joining me now is Dr. Kamara Jones, a family physician, epidemiologist and past president of the American Public Health Association. Dr. Jones, great to have you with us. So. What do you make of Governor Abbott's uh, decision here? What, what could the fallout be when you see a state as large as Texas uh, with numbers that have not necessarily declined to the degree that it would allow for someone to feel comfortable in opening up 100 percent and removing a mask mandate now making this decision? Well, his decision is premature and it may cost many, many lives. We have to understand that this virus has one job which is to reproduce itself. And it will reproduce itself. It will spread and infect and potentially kill any available, susceptible person. We control the availability of people by hiding from the virus behind our masks, by not mingling in crowds, keeping our distance. And we, then we can affect the susceptibility with the vaccine, which is having a very slow rollout. So, you know, to take the only method that we can all employ, the masking and the physical distancing and the like, and to take that away at the state level and I guess leave it up to individuals, do they feel brave enough, is very premature. It's going to cause another spike in Texas, which will not just be kept in Texas, because what happens in Texas happens around the United States. What happens in the world happens in the United States. We cannot wall ourselves off. Yeah, and certainly given the, yeah, I was going to say, and certainly just to add to that, given that there is no travel restrictions in and out of Texas, people who are affected by it there could certainly still travel, uh, as you mentioned, and spreading it elsewhere. Hey, thanks for watching our YouTube channel. You should know that you can follow today's top stories and breaking news and catch up on your favorite MSNBC shows all in one place. Download the NBC News app today. Okay, guys, let's move into our next story. This one was very, very troubling. And it's about how hazing has once again become very, very popular in colleges and universities around the United States. But what's happening is a lot of these young people are ending up getting hurt or dying. Listen to this story. This happened just recently. Bowling Green State University student in critical condition after an alleged fraternity hazing incident. The Bowling Green State University student is in critical condition after a alleged hazing incident involving alcohol. The student has been identified as Stone Fultz. Family attorney Sean Alto told the news that Fultz was hospitalized after alleged hazing activity involving alcohol consumption at an off-campus event happened. He is currently in critical condition, according to the Pro Medical Hospital. Doctors treating folks are going through with organ donation processes. This is so sad. The fraternity said that folks had died in its initial statement. We extend our deepest and sincere sympathy to the student's family and friends and all of those affected by the tragic loss. This was um, the statement that was issued from the fraternity. In the initial statement, 
the news were told it's insensitive and inappropriate to put out a statement that he had passed away when he has not. The info is still coming out. Just wait and gather the facts. It's horrible to do these things in advance of the family. And that's why I will say this little side note. People are so quick to post things on social media, especially like people's deaths and stuff. Please be respectful and at least allow the family time to post those things. I've seen um, friends of people or post someone passed away and the family has no idea. Could you even imagine that? You go on Facebook or Instagram and find out a loved one has passed away because the family doesn't even know what's going on and they had a chance to put out their own statement. I just think that's so disrespectful when things like that happen. The university is aware of the incident and the fraternity would be placed on interim suspension as they work with law enforcement to investigate what happened to that young man. Okay, let's move on to Kelvin Hunter. He cannot seem to stay out of the news. You guys might have remembered a while ago, he opened up a restaurant in Brooklyn. Well, now him and Serena, the alleged other woman, he just threw a expensive, birthday party for her. Last year, when him and Winnie, Wendy split, um, reasons are irreconcilable differences. For Kevin to just settle down with the woman that many believe was his mistress, her name is Sharina, and they've had a child, baby girl, um, People were just outraged that he would take her down to Miami. She got flewed out to Miami and he just spent all kinds of money on her. And so what was so upsetting, this was right after Wendy's mom passed. Remember, he was down um, in Florida with Wendy at Wendy's mom's funeral services. Well, unbeknownst to Wendy, he was also partying with Sharina. Isn't that something? I'm telling you, it doesn't get any worse than that. Okay, guys, I'm going to close out on a video clip discussing the vaccines and how um, those who've had the first phase one of the vaccine are um, having to wait for phase two because there have been shortages. This is Tom Costello. Just over two months into the vaccine rollout, more at-risk Americans are getting vaccinated, with 55% of those 65 and older receiving at least one shot, though many minority communities are lagging. In Maryland, where African Americans represent 31% of the population, only 16% of those who've been vaccinated are black. The problem is not hesitancy uh, at the moment. The problem is access. Now, mobile vaccination units are seeking out the Underserved. Our hope is really to focus on the areas that have been hardest hit and to protect our most vulnerable residents. All three vaccines offer critical protection against severe infection, hospitalization, and death. But the mayor of Detroit turned down 6,200 J&J &J doses, saying they had enough this week to vaccinate those with appointments. Moderna and Pfizer are the best, and I am going to do everything I can to make sure the residents of the city of Detroit get the best. But after talking to the White House, the mayor today said he will add the J&J &J vaccine to the COVID fight. We've got to get away from this issue of comparing one with the other, except to say that we have a highly efficacious group of three vaccines. Also tonight, the CDC says it is still working on new guidelines for people who are fully vaccinated, some 28 million so far. Go straight across and make a left. Traveling and restaurant dining should be okay, but experts urge mask wearing until more people are vaccinated. It's a good show of solidarity that even if you're vaccinated, while the vast majority of us are not, when you go to the grocery store, to still be respectful and polite and wear your mask. Tom, tell us about this new research on a link between obesity and COVID. Yeah, it suggests that people who are obese are up to 10 times more likely to die from COVID. So all the more reason, say researchers and doctors, for those people to get vaccinated as quickly as possible.
Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app. Okay, guys, and that concludes that clip. Um, thank everybody for stopping by. As you can see, I was a little shakiness in my voice because I'm super nervous. I normally do uploads. Um, this is my first time going live, so you can hear it in my voice. But um, over time, I'll get more and more comfortable with StreamYard. Like I said, I'm still learning. And again, I do apologize for those who came to the earlier broadcast. I had to cut it short. Um, every day is a learning process. Um, I really, really appreciate everybody who took the time to stop by because you didn't have to do it, but I'm so glad that you did. Um, I dropped the link. If anybody wanted to come up, you're welcome to. Um, if not, I'm going to close it out. I'm going to give it a few minutes and I'm going to close out. And I'm going to continue to do my uploads during the week. And I'm going to try probably like on the weekend, do one live just to, you know, keep familiarizing myself with StreamYard. Um, once again, Tracy, thank you for coming by. Laurie, thank you for coming by. China doll, you're so awesome. Um, I'm also, all three of you ladies, I'm going to mod you guys up. I really appreciate you stopping by. And um, like I said, in the future, hopefully my lives will grow and I'll, you know, get more subscribers, subscribers and things like that. And so in due time, I'll know I'll need mods. And since you guys were the first ones here, I really appreciate it. I'm going to give you guys mod sticks. Okay, have a great rest of the weekend. Take care, and I appreciate you so much. Be blessed.